All right, once again, good morning, good evening, good afternoon to everyone. My name is Jim St. Clair. I'm the Executive Director for Linux Foundation Public Health. Um, and as in several cases in the past, I am uh, um, honored to be able to host uh, someone from a government perspective to highlight the importance of open source digital health and government applications. So far before, of course, we've hosted the WHO with their prospects in the open source program office, uh, Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, and they're developing open source efforts. Uh, and now it is uh, a thrill to be able to highlight, uh, quite frankly, one of the largest and most mature open source projects in digital health in the VA through the, uh, through the VISTA system. Um, I'm honored today to present Dr. Raphael Richards from the VA VISTA Cloud Project, who's going to walk you through the uh, efforts to uh, inculcate and leverage open source uh, tools for cloud native systems, uh, which we host here at the Linux Foundation as part of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, uh, to modernize and take what was the world's largest and most developed open source electronic healthcare record system into the 21st century as a cloud native application. And with that, Dr. Richard, I am happy to turn it over to you for your presentation, sir. Thank you, Jim. Uh, uh, just a brief bio on myself. I'm a physician informaticist in the VA, I'm trained as a biomedical engineer and computer scientist before I went to, into medicine. So I speak two languages of technology and medicine. <clears throat> My role in the VA is primarily with uh, supporting the VA's integrated health information system called VISTA. And uh, this talk will review be a high level review of what the VA's information system is, the current state and its migration and evolution as a cloud native system in the VA enterprise cloud. As a, a introduction, uh, let me first ex expand this to the full size of the screen. Is that better for everyone? Uh, yes, that looks good, sir. Okay. Uh, so the Veteran Health, Veteran Health Administration provides lifelong health care to 9 million veterans through a nationally integrated network of 1,700 hospital and clinics across the continental United States, Hawaii, Alaska, and also as far as Guam. This, the Veteran Information System evolved as a grassroots field-developed system uh, because out of the need in the central office, there were many acquisition attempts to buy a centralized system in the late 70s or in the early 80s, which uh, the top-down approach uh, did not work. And computer technology had evolved to the point where it was easy enough to develop uh, our, the VA's own system, and there was a very motivated group of programmers and physicians who learned programming to develop the, uh, their, our own system. All right, so the healthcare system, the VA, uh, the veteran VISTA system is an integrated database application server. The, the technology that does this is a, uh, from a technical point of view, is called a multi-dimensional multi key value store with integrated language. This is called MUMPS. It's the Mass General Hospital Utility Multiprogramming System. It's a very easy language and database to learn. There are only 26 commands. And there's you can I've learned this this system in a weekend. There's a hundred page booklet uh, on learning mumps uh, by Professor O'Kane at the University of Wisconsin. I would highly encourage you to buy this book. It's an open source uh, mumps database technology. And for those who don't know what never heard of mumps, it's the most important database you've never heard of. The mumps database runs two thirds of all healthcare in the United States. Uh, major other health information systems such as Epic and Meditech are based on the same database application language as Vista. And so while it may be old, it's proven and tried and tested. And a large portion of the banking and finance industry also runs on the MUMPS transactional engine as well. TD Ameritrade and Fidelity information systems and probably about a third of ATMs in North America and point of sale systems run on the MUMPS database at the back end. Trillions of dollars flow through the MUMPS database every day. The Bank of Thailand, which has 60 million bank accounts, 
that reconciles down to the penny every night is running on one single mumps database system. It's much more performant than much more expensive relational technologies. So I highly encourage everyone to look that up. It's the mumps database technology. The open source implementation of that, it is commercially supported, but it's AGPL v3 license is called Yata DB. That's Y-O-T-T-A DB. The veteran integration system, why it functions so well is that it's integrated from the get-go. The database and the applications are integrated in one system. Think of it as peanut butter and, and chocolate. It's the, the code and the data are integrated together. So you don't have to write SQL queries to access data. You can directly access any data in line within your code without writing any query code. And this reduces all the layers of a traditional four-layer application in relational database terms, the relational database, the JDBC, ODBC connector, the application code, and the other APIs to create an application, whereas in MUMPS, it's all one single code base and database blended. Uh, the database has grown over the years uh, to become 198 integrated applications within the database. The integrated patient record today contains over 400 million veteran years of data for 5 billion documents for, and continues to grow at a rapid pace of 4 million new orders, labs, images, and documents every day. And it's a very highly performant transaction processing engine, processing more than 200 million transactions a day and 50 million clinical reminders and business logic to assure that every lab, every order, uh, every process of care is validated and of high quality. The high level, the system has a end user interface. There are more than 50 different clients to Vista. The main client to Vista is the computerized patient record system or CPRS uh, that is used by a staff of 380,000 VA staff working at the 1500 care facilities across the US. And uh, the, it's connected between the CPRS and Vista are connected by a remote procedure call interface. Uh, that, that supports the 200 million transactions a day. The computerized patient record system is a popular uh, user interface. It has continuously achieves the highest rankings by physician end users uh, based on ease of use, satisfaction, connectivity, and usefulness as a clinical tool. And this is in spite of the age but no one gets tired of simplicity. And the most important thing to a clinician is that it's simple and fast. And so features don't matter. What matters is the fact that we spend as much time as we possibly can in face direct uh, making eye contact with our patients taking care of them. So in summary, the VA healthcare system is a very performant system. It's an open source. It represents 30 years of continuous evolution. If its value today is priceless, but if one were to redevelop it today, it would be on the order of seven or $8 billion. All of this is open source and on the GitHub link at the end of the talk. In terms of data management, in terms of the four Vs of data, volume, variety, velocity, and veracity, again, it's about 400 million veteran years of data, which is the gold it's a treasure trove of gold that runs the VA. The VA has a very unique mandate to ma maintain access to all that data for 75 years, unlike any other agency or private sector. The data retention in private sector is only seven years. It's more than 15 petabytes of images and hundreds of billions of structured computable data fields. Uh, the database itself is comprised of 65,000 fields and 5,500 files uh, uh, across 130 databases. It uh, performs more than 100 million transactions a day with millisecond latency. And uh, in terms of veracity, it has real-time continuous business logic validating, verifying every transaction. Now, the migration strategy of the VA initially is comprised of two phases. The first is migration without modification of the existing system with some enhancements. And then there's the modification or adaptive maintenance to leverage the cloud to make it cloud native. VA acquired an enterprise health services platform that's commercial that provides integration, interoperability, analytics and AI and streaming services underneath the VISTA system 
to provide systems integration for new medical devices, diagnostics and cloud services, for analytics and AI for Python, R and Julia, TensorFlow and MATLAB, Visual Studio Code, Jupyter Notebooks, GitHub integration, natural language processing, and other uh, analytical tools, cloud streaming services with, for telehealth and direct to patient care and interoperability services using the HL7 standard called FHIR. An overview of the migration process is taking the as-is uh, VISTA system to comprise of data, just 400 million veteran years of data, and all the applications, that's over 190. On top of its commercial health platform, uh, within the commercial cloud infrastructure to create the VA Health Cloud. This commercial health cloud platform provides health information exchange, interoperability between the VA and DOD, AI and machine learning services, streaming data services to provide anywhere to anywhere care, while preserving all of the veteran specifics and VA specifics of care that have built up over the years that are congressionally mandated veteran VA specifics. All the veteran applications are preserved, the workflows are preserved, the business processes are preserved, and all the interfaces are preserved. And as a note, more than two thirds of the United States population have some component of their health record on the same technology uh, that the VA uses. Again, it's the, the MUMPS database platform. Beneath all of this technology, the core technology again is the MUMPS database technology. In terms of migration, the cloud infrastructure involves the migration to a modern mainstream commercially supported cloud infrastructure, both Amazon Web Services and Microsoft Azure. And this is to assure that we have a vendor neutral, cloud neutral, portable platform uh, and to future proof that data as, as it's essential that this is becomes is portable for the next 75 years. This provides immediate performance and scalability improvements, provides access to hundreds of off-the-shelf commercial cloud services. And we now have uh, about 20% of the VA's VISTA systems fully migrated and in operation in the VA enterprise cloud. In terms of the cloud platform, uh, we are using InterSystems Iris. It's a large commercial implementation of the MUMPS database technology. And again, the largest vendors of EHRs, electronic health records, outside of the VA in the private sector, Epic and Meditech and others use the MUMPS database technology as well, as well and also use the commercial supported version of this called IRIS. And in terms of cloud services, uh, we immediately gain benefit to hundreds of cloud commercial cloud services. Two of the main ones that I'll be talking about later are microservices, to improve performance of the Vista clients, such as CPRS, and enabling real-time mirroring and analysis of all the traffic to provide zero trust security monitoring. As again, a high level overview of the strategy to migrate and modernize the system, uh, leveraging the VA enterprise cloud technologies if we were to map the various layers of VISTA, now, all of these layers that you see here in gray are MUMPs, except for the VISTA clients, and they're mapping to their analog in cloud architecture terminology. The on-premises data infrastructure becomes our new infrastructure as a service, virtual machines, servers, storage, load balancers, and network, and those are our Amazon and Azure provided cloud infrastructure. In terms of the Vista server and database technology, that's equivalent to our platform as a service. That's our execution runtime, our database, web server, and development tools. And that's the basis of our health platform. The Vista applications, even though they're MUMPs, these are equivalent to software as a service as the application layer uh, and provide our cloud services. And the Vista clients, which are thick clients currently uh, written in Delphi, it's more than 50 of them, but CPRS is the main one. Uh, their equivalent in cloud terminology are, are using web technologies, and these would evolve eventually to become web clients. The specific use case of the cloud, where we specifically went beyond migration without modification or lift and shift to leverage cloud services specifically, 
to enhance services and care in two main areas. One is to improve security, and one is to improve uh, performance of the end user clients using emulation services or application microservices. An overview of the migration and adaptation to, for cloud native services is, is uh, depicted here with migration uh, occurring in phases. My, the first phase of the migration are the Vista replica systems. These are the disaster recovery systems, and these provide us high reliability by having the failover copies of the Vista systems hosted in the VA cloud. The second phase of the migration is migrating the production Vista servers to the VA enterprise cloud, again, to provide high reliability. And finally, so this is the migration phase, the adaptive maintenance phase, or the adaptation to leverage cloud native services. Uh, the first two areas were improving services through zero trust security monitoring and application microservices. Zero trust. And these are two sides of the same coin. You cannot provide better access without security and vice versa. We could put the Vista servers in the basement, disconnect them from the network. They'd be very secure, but not accessible. And vice versa, if we publish the data on the web, it'd be very, very accessible, but not secure. And it's getting the right balance between accessibility and security that is essential. And the way that we approach this is the way that credit card companies do this by, by analyzing and fingerprinting all of the traffic and analyzing the patterns of use and who, what, when, and where, what server, what client, and what transaction, uh, and what the payload of that transaction, what the data of that transaction is to understand the patterns of use. So when you go to buy your normal usual bag of groceries every Friday, uh, and your card is blocked, the credit card company blocked that card because of suspicious activity. And you call them up and say, well, what happened? Did you buy $1,500 of sports equipment in South Africa? Uh, well, no, of course you didn't because you haven't gone there. And they obviously pick up the fact that that is not your normal pattern of use. This is the same thing. And that that's what we call zero trust security. It's pattern, it's an AI-based machine learning based pattern matching of patterns of use of data that gives us this surveillance based continuous comprehensive security monitoring and this has been this is what we've proven out by mirroring and monitoring and fingerprinting all of the remote procedure call traffic or rpc traffic we have achieved what we call zero trust security and this has been certified to the highest levels in the us federal government to the FedRAMP high standards, to the VA's highest standard called risk vision with 425 security controls, to the highest standards in Department of Defense using their EMAS controls, which is more than 1,600 security controls, to NIST with NFISMA high, and of course, commercial and private sector with HIPAA and other standards. There's uh, This was a very extensive and thorough two-year program of certifying and securing the Vista system in the cloud. And this, uh, in government terms, what we call an authority to operate or ATO, was the most comprehensive scrutiny on the Vista system and its protocols in its history. And is the first time any government system has not gone through dual federal agency certification in the cloud. I don't know of any system that's gone through more security uh, uh, profiling than the Vista system. This gives us a big benefit in terms of being interoperable across federal agencies to different security standards, because that's a blocker when it comes to information exchange, when one agency uses different standards for security than another agency. The FedRAMP high standard is the highest one available in the US Gov Cloud, and this is the standard that we met in profiling and securing the VISTA system to provide zero trust security. This figure is a very high level overview of this zero trust security framework that has been proven and in place now for the Vista systems that have been migrated to the cloud. And what this enables, because we have the security, it allows us to now stream those RPCs and clients to anywhere, to anywhere in the United States and do this securely. The implementation of this, and this is a very high level again, is by, by mirroring 
using AWS mirroring technology, we mirror the remote procedure call in real time using AWS Kinesis, which is their streaming uh, traffic uh, monitoring mechanism and flowing this into their uh, CloudWatch technology to alarm and alert where we have a remote procedure call monitor. What we do with the remote procedure calls, again, there's about 200 million of them a day uh, for, uh, that encompass all users. There's 400,000 clients and it's 130 Vista systems. So that's on the order of tens of millions of point-to-point -point connections uh, with more than, uh, again, about 200 million uh, transactions a day. These need to be analyzed and we are in the process of still profiling these to fingerprint all use. The zero trust security framework from left to right uh, shows the machine learning pipeline that we use to, in a semi-supervised approach to analyze all of the traffic between all the end users, all the clients, and all the servers. And the only way we can do this is leveraging the kind of scalability and streaming analytics capabilities that is available to us in the cloud. This is a cloud-specific feature that is not available on our government-run data centers. And the, to simplify this, we did static analysis of the RPCs stored in an S3 bucket. We created some machine processable interface definitions to bootstrap the learning process. And then we uh, operationalize this with dynamic near real-time RPC analysis uh, after we've created an RPC classifier. This RPC classifier business logic can then be implemented in an off-the-shelf security monitoring tool, which by itself has no capability providing security for the interface because it has no knowledge of the remote procedure call interface. So the business rules and the classification rules developed through this machine learning pipeline are operationalized, uh, providing us near real-time audit, alarms, logs, and surveillance capabilities for all users of all clients of all data flowing in all Vista systems. It's a comprehensive zero trust security framework that allows us to provide access to all the data, allows us to safely evolve the system in the cloud and safely allow us to provide access to the system for near real time access to provide veteran care and all other kinds of machine learning and other value add analytics on the data. Uh, references to the Vista system and the Cloud Vista implementation are available on our GitHub and website. This is just a high level talk about the system. I did not go into technical details or the code. In the GitHub, you will find uh, Node Vista, which is a JavaScript node layer that we have put on top of the, the MUMS database so that anyone who knows JavaScript node can write code against the system. Both MUMPS and JavaScript are interpreted language, and they can be written in line as peers on the MUMPS database. So you don't need to know the MUMPS language to be an effective and productive coder to write new Vista applications. There are other APIs to the MUMPS database in Rust, in Python, and several other languages. The main one we've used is JavaScript because we can do both client-side and server-side programming with one language, and that has proven uh, to be the most effective and productive way that we've developed our classifier and emulation services for security purposes, as well as performance enhancements with the, with the emulation. The website is here on the right. It's cloudvista.github.io, and I welcome your questions. Thank you very much, Doctor. And let's see if we have a couple of questions coming in. We've got uh, one question. Other than the data, is this completely open source and public domain and available to entities like other universities or medical centers alike? Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, if you go to the GitHub, you could download, run, install. We've Dockerized everything uh, in, in GitHub. All of our dev and test is done via Dockers. And so you can download, run, install the Docker and be up and running and running the entire Vista system on your hopefully Unix-based uh, laptop, but it'll run in any, any computer running Docker. And the whole our whole dev and test environment is there uh, to run some demonstrations. We've also done a, a, a number of integrations with open source tools like Grafana 
for monitoring the performance of the system and many other uh, integrations with open source tools. And they are all on the, the GitHub. Uh, one, a few ones that you might be interested in is the natural language processing integration with the Cloud Vista. And that allows text processing using entity relation uh, extraction to do semantic search. Uh, and this is without training. It's just a very intelligent entity extraction, uh, natural language uh, processing tool. Uh, there's also um, uh, the, but that's, there are several other things, but I can be happy to receive any contact from anyone and provide you any guidance on through the GitHub, but it, it should be self-explanatory on the, the GitHub to get started. Great, and I guess a related question: If we have um, if we have medical data sets, um, some of it potentially PHI, some of it uh, anonymized, um, is there a, a test environment or dev environment to interact with that uh, as an extension, um, um, or do we have to have a separate cloud instance? Is that possible for facility? So, I'm trying to understand the question again, you what was the objective of what you want to do? Uh, could we bring in other data sets to your platform and share using what we have to do, or do we have to set up our own cloud? Um, it's fairly, it's very straightforward to set this up through a Docker uh, on your own quote cloud. Your own quote cloud can be desktop or cloud, but Docker removes this notion that the cloud is in someone's big commercial data center. For our purposes, there's no distinction between a Docker container running on your desktop and the implementation that we operationalized in the AWS or Azure clouds because they have migration tools to take your Docker container and operationalize them on the cloud. Great, very helpful. And, and I have one question of my own, of course, you know, with the VA having its massive EHR modernization program. What are some of the next steps from Vista Cloud and, and Cloud Vista, and how do you see it progressing? The key thing here is that there are so many veteran and VA specifics that have been evolved over the last 30 years that are congressionally mandated, and they are simply not available in commercial offerings, and they never will be unless we pay a large sum of money to redevelop the same business logic and essentially start from scratch by re-engineering a commercial a generic tool that does private sector care which are by the way they're focused on billing VA doesn't do billing so there's a really dramatic um disconnect between VA's mission which is a public health system we don't do billing and we don't have any of the Medicare and Medicaid compliance issues that the private sector has to deal with and all those regulations which are very very onerous regulations we don't have to do those things so uh, those need to be preserved. And this strategy of microservices emulation lets us emulate those things that we need to preserve that are veteran and VA specific as a centralized cloud native service. And those things that are generic and off the shelf can be provided by best of breed off the shelf services like EHRM for the, a lot of the other services. But there, we will be living in a multi-cloud a multi-vendor environment uh, going forward. Uh, there's not going to be one size fits all, and there's not going to be one vendor providing us the, the entire solution. Uh, there's the, the organization is far too complex. And we've already begun this journey. The bulk of uh, the new services will be provided by EHRM, but this strategy allows us a smooth transition to a cloud-first, cloud-native, cloud-centralized approach to veteran care versus the 130 decentralized VISTA systems. And this is the beginning of that journey. Excellent. So as I understand it, we'll see a, a real kind of parallel operations or, or almost an evolution over time as these, these things are avoided. Right. We, I, we, we're already seeing the development of applications that are vendor neutral, centralized cloud solutions. Uh, for example, there's a there's a scheduling uh, cloud, a centralized cloud uh, based scheduling tool 
that is vendor agnostic that uses the fire hl7 standard for scheduling and will simply use the apis of both ehrm and the vista system in a vendor neutral way to provide enterprise scheduling for veteran care whether they are done in the od or in the community or in the va uh, or with an ehrm uh, this will be a vendor neutral interface and that is the that is essentially the design motif that va is proceeding with as we go forward to ease the burden and smooth the transition forward but it's it's going to be vendor neutral cloud first in terms of the user experience excellent thank you and if you have any other questions for dr richards uh, now would be a good time to throw them in the chat And uh, Dr. Richards, one more I have is, oh, wait, we have another one in the chat, and then I'll ask mine. For the future, um, I assume all additional functions will be added to GitHub as you go forward in the future, too. That is correct. Uh, I've been, we've been very strict, and I've spent six months with the intellectual property attorneys of the Defense Information Security Agency, or DISA, to craft data rights language of all contracts related to the VISTA system. And that was done about five or six years ago. And ever since then, every project, every contract that's been let has uh, included this data rights language, which mandates that all code data, metadata, and documentation be uh, created, managed, and version controlled in a public GitHub. So all the code there you will see goes back, all the documentation, documentations mandated to be done in Markdown and version controlled along with the code. So they all go in harmony. This has been a very successful strategy over the last five years of evolution of this project uh, with the teams from the VA and DOD, the two largest federal agencies with many different contractors and teams coming on and off board, working in seven different time zones uh, with seamless continuity of every all the code and all the data. And the result of are using GitHub effectively in mandating this in the contract has meant that the code developed five or six years ago is now in full operation in production, the VA cloud managing the Vista system. So it's it's not just a nice to have. This is really an essential strategy. And it's not just about open source. It's about what uh, real companies need to do when they have a very large distributed workforce of programmers and developers, it's absolutely essential to use GitHub uh, to do version control of all artifacts related to the, your enterprise, both your documents, your data, your code. Uh, and uh, so, but in addition to that, we've enforced the, the AGPLv3 license on everything. Yeah, and actually that was the uh, next question I had. Of course, here Analytics Foundation, we use various licensing types, Apache 2 and others. And I think in our discussions together, you had mentioned specifically GPL and your preferred open source license type. We do prefer that. Uh, the infrastructure that we built this on, by the way, the, the, the GitHub implementation of Cloud Vista is 100% open source. The, uh, the MUMPS database engine that it runs on is Yada DB. Uh, it's Y-O-T-T-A-D-B. I would Google that and download, run, install that. I would encourage everyone here is interested in anything to do with healthcare. If you want to do anything with healthcare, you need to learn mumps. That's the bottom line. Two-thirds of Americans have some component of their record in a mumps database, whether it's Epic or Allscripts or Meditech or the VA. Uh, uh, the mumps database runs healthcare. It also runs a lot of finance, but if you going, if you want to understand anything about Vista, uh, I would again encourage you to get a copy of Kevin O'Kane. He's a professor emeritus at with University of Wisconsin. It's about a fifteen dollar hundred page booklet, uh, and you can read that in a weekend to become uh, very comfortable with the language. And once you learn the power of an integrated application database. Uh, such as mumps, uh, you probably won't look at databases the same way ever again. And that's a beautiful thing. Fantastic. Let's see, do we have one more question? Um, yeah, 
Yeah, not quite sure about. Um, you think we could somehow pay to get 75 years of storage? Um, I guess that's a question about the availability of the information or information sharing. I mean, I know, for instance, in other models like Mayo and others, they've set up de-identified data pools for other companies to, uh, to, 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 to use for development and kind of synthetic patient data sets. I don't know if that's the case here or not. Yeah, so what's happening in the private sector uh, is that the EHR vendors have transitioned becoming electronic health record vendors to becoming big data companies. And they're taking all of their customers' data and harvesting it and doing de-identification, which we all know can be re-identified, okay? But let's be honest. Uh, and selling that on as a service to do machine learning and analytics and other purposes. And we don't know once it's in the hands of a private vendor, we don't know really the fine print of who's controlling the data. Uh, but uh, we, but in essence, the EHR vendors in the private sector have have transitioned because they hold so much healthcare data in their proprietary systems that only they control those databases. Uh, they are now transitioning to leverage the fact that they have so much data under in their control to uh, monetize this in many different ways. And uh, Mayo is one example of that. VA will not do that. It's public data. It, it hinders the trust in the VA as an organization to sell that data for secondary use. Uh, and that's a problem uh, of trust, essentially. Uh, if the veterans were to know that we were profiting from their data out, or outside entity were profiting from their data, that would be very problematic. So it's uh, so the short answer is no. There have been many requests and asked for this data. The data is the most important thing of the VA. It's the gold that runs the VA. And uh, it's incredibly valuable and uh, so I think the, 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 the there's no, the, the, I think the short answer is no, uh, giving access to VA data to a third party is probably, uh, not in the cards, but as far as I know. Okay. Perfectly understandable. And yeah, that was, uh, that was also good, uh, for the person with the question as well. Um, and, um. I think I had one last final question just to, to understand. So, so this is an open community. So uh, members of the open source community could come to, uh, to your GitHub and make contributions or um, propose other changes, other, other open source projects or areas that you may be interested in in the future in terms of um, open source edge or open source AI or other components that could be layered on here. Recognizing that, that AWS is a, is a, uh, a member of several uh, Linux Foundation projects and contributes significantly to the open source community, and maybe there may be there may be areas to collaborate in there as well. Oh, absolutely! And I've I've worked with uh, many members of the open source community on small projects. For for example, the natural language processing plugin for uh, Cloud Vista was by a gentleman by the name of Ram Salampal. He's he calls himself the Linux guy. You go to linuxguy.org. Uh, he's been a big contributor from the open source community. He's done a Grafana implementation to monitor. It's an open source uh, system monitoring framework. And he's done a lot of other work uh, to add value and experiment with integrations of many open source tool chains because they're all open in the same open source community. So there's lots of room for integration uh, in collaboration with open source tools and community. And I, I really welcome that. I think you just need to uh, go to the uh, GitHub, the Cloud Vista GitHub and uh, uh, simply request to access and you'll, you'll become a member. Fantastic. And thank you very much, Doctor. Uh, we don't appear to have any more questions in here, and uh, uh, I had the uh, the last few questions, so greatly appreciate the contributions. Um, if there aren't any more questions, I want to again thank Dr. Richards for his participation today and his overview of this fantastic project within the VA. 
Uh, VA has long been an open source contributor and uh, enthusiastic to see this next generation of work that he is leading. Um, thank you very much, everyone. I want to thank you for your attendance today. This recording uh, will be available. We'll share the link for any of your colleagues that didn't get a chance to attend. Uh, and thank you, as always, for attending our webinars today.